Right, let's speak now to Tunjai Taimaz. He's a professor of geophysics and seismology at uh, Istanbul's Technical University, and he's also a member of the National Earthquake Advisory Board of Turkey. And he joins me now on the news hour. Welcome to the program, sir. Help us understand Hello. Turkey is prone to earthquakes, and yet we, uh, we're still seeing buildings collapse. And a new law on earthquake proofing buildings came into effect in 1999. So why are we still seeing buildings coming down during earthquakes? Well, as far as earth sciences and civil engineering and earthquake engineering are concerned, if we obey the rules of the Turkey Building Seismic Code published, uh, established in 2018 and effective since the January 2019, we wouldn't have seen any of those disasters. Tunjai, uh, let me jump in. Did this building in Bayrakle, an eight-story building, did that obey this rule here from 1999? No, certainly not. Even before 1999 or even 1975 would have been much better off uh, in experience. Mainly what we witnessed on the, uh, in the field is reinforced concrete buildings either were damaged or totally collapsed. This is the scene we are seeing right now. So that's why we need to to introduce seismic retrofitting to in, uh, and define the seismic damage and repair if necessary. Uh, in other words, seismic inspection for all the existing buildings in the region should be immediately required. And many buildings, perhaps in the region, afterwards need seismic retrofitting. This is what's missing. But the, as far as the seismic building codes are in effect is concerned, uh, we have world standard uh, codes of seismic uh, retrofitting. Now, Istanbul is expected at uh, any time to have a large earthquake. Istanbul, where you are, when, where I am. Um, is the situation for buildings any better than in Izmir? This is a city with over 15 million people. Yes, it is indeed a very interesting, exciting question, but it's a huge city over nearly 20 million population. It's hard to say for every point to point, but it's uh, the new buildings are uh, capable of seismic damage if necessary uh, or introduced throughout the North Anatolian Fault within the uh, Sea of Marmara. But for the local, uh, the foundation uh, problems should be in inspected or if any old infrastructure still needs to be uh, reinforced in regions to region. Okay, and tell us, you know, we're watching these scenes now of uh, rescue and recovery. What do you think the, uh, the teams are doing right now and what are the risks of further aftershocks that could hamper their work? Yes, as far as the seismic... Uh, I mean, the emergency management search and rescue efforts on, uh, and the, uh, the management in the field we see is, is well done. So the first aid, logistics, food, rescue, and uh, giving a shelter, has it's been absolutely perfect above the world standards as far as the effort and all the other teams' abilities are concerned. Mm -hmm. But we do have aftershocks. We still didn't have the big one. And it will continue, we'll continue weeks maybe up to a year for a magnitude of magnitude of Richter scale seven earthquake. So all those who were maybe not you know, damaged or fully collapsed, but it has slight damages should be carefully inspected and we have to sp uh, stay safe away from those uh, buildings because we have a COVID-19 pandemic and also we have a disaster management on the one hand in the earthquake. So it's all conflicting management. It's very hard for local and central government uh, authorities to handle this. So uh, the disaster within a disaster, it's a difficult job. And uh, so far, I am pleased to see the success and we are doing great in the field. Thank you so much, Tunjai Taimaz, for sharing your expertise with us on this uh, important story.